All right, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, but this is probably going to be too deep for most people. Okay, so um, just uh, consider what I have to say, uh, whether you're familiar with this stuff or not. Okay, so in Daniel 9, we read about the 70 weeks and uh, the Messiah, the Prince, and so on and so forth. There is, uh, this is a prophecy of Daniel, obviously, and I'm going to explain this real quick. And there's uh, a couple of uh, very bad teachings, false teachings. One is that the Messiah is the Antichrist, and the other is the idea that this is uh, talking about um, in 70 AD, the destruction of Jerusalem or whatever. All right, both of those are false. I'm going to try to make this real easy to understand. Obviously, um, it's going to be too much for people to take because there's so much false teaching out there, and it's hard to overcome these bad worldviews. So let me make this simple. Okay, 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for inequity and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. All right, to make an end of sins is obviously in reference to Jesus, to make reconciliation. That's uh, also all things related to Jesus. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks. So, this restoring and building Jerusalem is not a physical city, but it is a spiritual city, and that is the believers in Jesus Christ, okay? He's building the church right now in the body of Christ, which are those who trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a physical city. It's a spiritual city. All right, and then... And three score in two weeks, the street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. So even though we're in very troublous times right now, that city is still being built. Okay. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. This is when Jesus lays down his life. All right. Not for himself, but for us. Um. No greater love does a man have than to lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. He laid down his life for us. Now, notice this th after three score in two weeks. All right, not before, after. So anybody that says, well, it was 70 AD and you count the weeks as years and all this nonsense are wrong. It's after Three score after 62 weeks is when Jesus laid down his life. Okay. And it's, I'm telling you, people are taking advantage of you who don't read your Bible. All right. And uh, that shall come, shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Un, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So, this is uh, in reference to when Jesus says, And the nation of God shall be taken from you and given to a people bearing the fruits thereof. Talking about those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the nation of God. All right. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. All right. This is talking about the one of the 70 weeks. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. This is the return of Jesus Christ when we are transformed into our heavenly bodies, right? Our bodies that will never die, and there will be no more death no more sorrow no more pain no more suffering all things will be new all right so in the midst of this week is when jesus was thrown on the cross and he died and then resurrected back to life okay and he caused 
the sacrifices and oblation to cease. He became the sacrifice for all of us. All right. Now, real quick, I'm making this longer than I wanted, but oh well. So in, here in Matthew 24, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? So, and then he continues to uh, tell them. All right, so, but I want to look at this here. There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. He's talking about the end of the world. That's why they are asking Jesus, what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? Because they know when all these things happen, when all these stones are thrown down, this is the end of the world. All right, so at the end of the world is when everything's going to be flattened. Everything's going to be destroyed. Everything that you, all these wondrous buildings that you see here, they're all going to be thrown down at the end of the world. All right, this is something to think about. And uh, they're, I'm telling you, people are taking advantage of people that don't read the Bible. And I want to make this as simple and easy to understand as possible. It's so tough nowadays with so many false teachers, so many kids who just think that they're experts on the Bible and have no understanding at all teaching these false things in the Bible. So I want to encourage you to read the Bible and ask God to understand what these things are talking about. And don't listen to no man. What's Jesus say right here? The very first thing he says after this, he says, take heed that no man deceive you all right read and believe that bible is from god all right and don't listen to man okay that's enough